Hey, in today's video I'm going to show you how to use Rust with Docker and how you can efficiently build your Rust Docker containers. I created this project Docker with Rust. We just have our main here with print hello world. Firstly, you have to have Docker installed. So to install Docker, you do something like sudo apt install docker.io or you could use a uh, sudo snap as well. To get started, we basically go to our project folder, add a file, just call it docker file, make sure you have the capital D at the start. In docker, um, if you have any knowledge of from, so basically the, the type of docker container we want. So we want the rust container. We'll just go at latest. The working directory in the docker container, so Debian Linux container. So we're going to have user source, just call it my app. Now we copy over from our current directory into our working directory. And then we have this run command when we're building. So obviously we just do our normal cargo build and the release version if you want. To keep it simple, we're just going to do cargo build and then cargo run. So the this command, unlike run, we use this at runtime. You'll see what I mean in a second. Right, that's that's basically it. That's all you need for a basic Rust container. Now there's a few more steps I want to go through. So let's just try that first of all. Uh, what's it called? Docker, yeah, Docker with Rust. So now we can do our build command. So it would be sudo docker build. And we're building here and we're going to give it a name, Rust build version one. Password. And there you go, you see it's going through all the steps of the build. Now if we go docker ps minus a, oh yeah, we need to run it first. So docker run Rust build version one. Got my sudo command again. There you go. Hello world. It ran. And yeah, now if we do docker ps minus a, we can see there was our container. It ran created six seconds ago. Rust build version one. That's the image name. There you go. It's that simple. Now the only issue with this, and it's a quite annoying issue in Rust, and the whole reason I'm making this video is that uh, if we add in a dependency, let's say rand, great, uh, yeah, there we go. So now let's build that again. And it, it will build this just fine, but it's not going to keep a cache of it. So each time it's going to download it. And that's an issue. So docker build, so let's build that again. But now you'll see it'll download that crate, which is no problem. But then if we want to add subsequent crates or dependencies, it's going to download all of them again. So we don't want it to download every single time that we build our crate. We want to keep a cached version, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Right, great. So now if we run that again, It will compile them and run. So hello world. But now if we add in another crate, let's say log. And we do this again. So now it grabs the crates again, but this time it's uh, it's going to go looking for rand again. Right, and you can see here, look, it's downloaded RAND again. So that's that's inefficient. That's extremely inefficient, actually. So our little workaround is to use this Cargo Wharf. And it's a very interesting crate created by Dens P. Basically, it saves us all the hassle of having to download from Crates.io. So all you require is build kit setup to have that set in your Docker environmental variables. Instead of writing a Docker file, you will 
do it all from the TOML file. Create the Docker image with that TOML file and it will replace all the com normal Docker file commands with these commands. So for the builder image, you can see base image setup commands are all being replaced here by this. So I will go back to our example here, Docker with Rust. And now, so what we have to do is first of all, we have to add this line at the beginning. Syntax equals dens p slash cargo. This is required for any time you use Wharf. You know what, I'm just going to copy paste this so I don't make a mistake. There we go. So this is just required at the beginning of the TOML file. Now we have the package dot, again, I'm just going to do this real quick. Package made a wharf builder. So this is where you put your builder commands for your Docker. And what we're going to put in here is the image we want to use. I'm going to use C looks and we're going to use M image and then target and then our architecture, which will be, I'm going to use M, I'm going to use muscle, but um, you can use GNU as well if you want. There we go. And now we have the output. So what image are we going to output it onto? Um, we're going to use scratch. I'm going to give it a working directory. Uh, we just use root and an entry point. Now, if you're unsure about any of these commands or you're kind of curious what they relate to in terms of Docker, uh, just go to the Docker and then have a look at this called a Docker image and it shows you exactly what these relate to. So we're going to give it an entry point of user local and bin docker with rust sorry basically give the destination of the binary so get that from a clipboard. I'm going to call ours docker with rust. And we're going to give it a destination. Put it in this entry point. And there you go. Uh, we no longer need the Docker file. We can actually uh, delete that. So we delete the Docker file. Before we run our build command in Docker, build kit has to be set to one in our environment variables for Docker. And we have to have a Docker version of 19.03 or higher. Let's just copy paste this. Right, so now we're going to do sudo paste in our docker build kit equals one docker build. We need to do, we need to have a flag of f cargo.toml and then a dot and then our image name. Rust Wharf version one. There we go. And you can see this is what's this is replacing our Docker file. Ooh, got an error. Fun. Okay, I think I know what's wrong here. Okay, yeah, we have a slight spelling mistake. <laughs> Left out an N in unknown. Let's try that again. Right, we can already see it's actually using cached uh, versions of what we had before. And it's done just like that. So now we can do we can do docker run on that. There you go, hello world. Now we can add in another dependency if we want. So or end vlogger. Right? And we can make a code change. Uh, let num. So we could print out a random number. Your lucky number. Just for the sake of the demo. Uh, 
right, there we go. So now we have this extra dependency in here. So we build the same thing again, but with the extra dependency. You can see it's pulling things from the cache here, cached, and so it doesn't actually have to do all that downloading again. It's way faster than what we saw in the uh, other method. We can run that again, and look, we're getting our lucky little number, and it runs just fine. I originally wanted to show you how you could do this on Windows, so Docker does work on Windows as well, and I will do that next time. You need to have the latest version of Windows 10, which is not available for my computer just yet. They're doing it like a phased approach. I hope you enjoyed. Hope this was helpful and uh, stay tuned for more. Cheers.